going to take a look at a few specific types of agate that are commonly faked because I don't want you to have problems with these. Fire agate. I love this stone. So natural fire agate is a really deep brown and the high quality stones display an iridescent flash. Now not every fire agate has this flash. You can have fire agate material that doesn't have any flash in it. But, you know, if you're just getting an inexpensive tumbled stone, it might not have the flash in it. That's totally normal, that's okay, that doesn't mean it's fake. Fire agate is technically a chalcedony and doesn't display any banding, and it's typically found in botrytal form, which means bubble-like, and you can see that here. I mean, this is very kind of bubble-like. And if it does have that iridescent flash, you most commonly see it in greens, golds, and oranges, but you can sometimes see it in purple or pink. One way to tell that you have natural fire agate is that it's pretty expensive. <laughs> it's often very expensive, in fact. And because it's a pricier stone, it's usually sold, especially if it has the flash, it's usually sold as cabochons, for jewelry making. So you can find it rough, you can find it tumbled, but I'd say most commonly you find it in cabochons. So here is a look at some different pieces of natural fire agate. So this piece is kind of a freeform cabochon. You can see it has a lot of iridescence. You can see that botrytal form. It, it's showing up almost like platelets here, but these are actually little like bubbles that form into each other. Think of like if you have a root beer float and you blow bubbles into it and the way that all those bubbles kind of come together on the surface um, of your root beer float, that's like what's happening here. It's like they all grew into each other. Here are a few rough pieces. You can see those bubbles growing on the surface of these stones. So that's very common with fire agate. And then here's one. It's actually, I think, the same one as I showed here, where you can see that beautiful flash. And this one has just been kind of polished to show that off. The surface has been flattened a bit. There is some bright color. It's mostly brown, though, kind of this rich kind of caramel color. Um, sometimes with some white or translucent areas mixed in whiter kind of gray and then those small patches of flash. Again, you'll see that it has the bright color. It, it is natural, uh, but not all of it has the flash. So here's where the fake stuff comes in. There is a ton of fire agate that is actually heated. Now, some sources say it's the brown stuff that has been heated. Some sources say it's just some other random agate or chalcedony that's been heated. And some sources say it's carnelian that's been heated. But the heat treating is what is said to bring out that brilliant orange red color. Again, if you're starting with carnelian, you probably already have the orange red. But then it's quickly cooled or quenched to create a really interesting kind of spider web or crackle appearance. And this technique is used also in fire and ice quartz or crackle quartz, which we'll talk about in a future class. But it's this is also because it's, you know, sometimes made from carnelian. It might be called spiderweb carnelian or snakeskin carnelian or fire carnelian. Or it can be called crab fire agate. It does look a little crabby, I guess, a little crabbish. So this is kind of like a fake, right? It's heated and cooled and has all this stuff going on to get it to look like this. It is not natural, authentic fire agate. It is at least made out of a stone, but I have seen some really tricky beads that are just made out of glass that kind of look like this. And I couldn't find any photos of those, unfortunately, but just like any kind of orange crackle coated glass um, 
can also be faked for fire agate. And you see that most commonly just in beads. So like I mentioned, some sources say that this is formed from carnelian rather than agate. And I just wanna say that both might be true because there are a lot of people manufacturing this stuff. And there are some differences that you see in this stone based on the batch. So, you know, you have a piece like this, this might've been made from agate. And, you know, especially because look at this one right underneath it, you can see there's some banding here. Whereas one like this might have been made from carnelian. It has a little bit different appearance, but ultimately that kind of crackle treatment through the heating and rapid cooling creates the same webbed or crackled appearance. Kind of looks like alligator skin, lizard skin, something like that. So here is a look uh, at those kind of zoomed out side by side. You can see a little bit more variety in the stones and what they look like. You will see this stuff made into beads, made into jewelry, available as tumbled stones. But the true fire agate is that natural brown color, usually not very exciting unless it has that iridescence to it. So then is fire agate sometimes called fire opal or are they in fact two different crystals? So Often we see fire agate that is mislabeled as fire opal or vice versa. And here's the thing, fire opal is much more expensive than fire agate when it has its own fiery flash. This piece here, it's, it's the only piece I could find a picture of. This doesn't have any fire, but really good quality fire opal does have fire inside of it, just like a boulder opal would or an Ethiopian opal would. So it has like glittery sparkles of green and yellow and gold inside. Um, and sometimes even like red and orange, it's so beautiful. Uh, and this material is often, when it's really high quality, not just put into a cabochon for jewelry, but even faceted. This material can be so pricey, it can be sold by the carat instead of just by the gram or by the pound. So the heated version of fire agate, that really orangey stuff we were just looking at, is often confused with fire opal and fire opal is genuine. Some of the best stuff comes from Mexico. It's a really similar intense orange color and it often has these little fractures like you see here and that's totally natural and normal. Most opal has this because it's an aqueous stone that like dries out a little bit and it just gets these cracks and fractures. It's also just a little bit easier to kind of chip. So this is, yeah, this is very typical. But it lacks that white spider webbing. So you won't have that because it hasn't been treated with that process of the crackle, the rapid heating and cooling. So this, if you see it, totally natural. If you see it with fire, even better. That's really cool stuff. And I have some resources for you about fire agates. You can see that's totally easy to tell the difference once you know that there is stuff out there that's not really fire agate. And I think the reason that it even got the name, I don't think that they are truly trying to fake the beautiful fire agate that we see that's the natural stuff with the iridescence. I think they just thought it was like a good name because once they heated it, it looked kind of fiery orange red and it had those crackles and it looked very lava-ish, right? And I just think they thought it was a good name but then it gets confusing because we have these two totally different things being called fire agate and one of them is not natural. Mm -hmm.